out of here. What am I looking for? It's magic. Sauvage. Le Parfum Dior. At Macy's, the fragrance destination. Happening now. Two teens playing with a gun, one shot, and in critical condition. We have a crew on the scene, what we know so far. The first COVID-19 vaccines are being administered here in Bear County. I'm Devin Clark, and coming up, we bring you inside of UT Health San Antonio School of Nursing for the historic event. And as the Pfizer vaccine is rolling out across the nation, more hope is on the horizon in the fight against COVID-19. The Moderna vaccine is one step closer at getting FDA emergency approval. A cold front is going to arrive in just a few hours, and you're going to notice it. I'll help you prepare. Coming right up. Buy now, pay later. Increasingly, it's an option you see when you're checking out online. Coming up, what you should know before choosing a short-term loan. The news at 5 starts right now. And we begin with late breaking news. San Antonio police on the scene of a fatal shooting in the 300 block of Belmont. The location about a block from East Commerce Street, roughly three blocks from St. Phillips College. What we've learned so far, police tell us two friends went to a home to check on a friend. When they got no answer, they forced their way in, finding that friend, a man in his 60s, dead with a single gunshot wound. Right now, police say they have no suspect information, but they do say there were reports of a disturbance at that location last night between the hours of 10 and midnight. The story is developing. We'll bring you more of the latest news as we learn it. Another shooting this afternoon, ending with a 15 year old male being rushed to the hospital. Police tell us his cousin, who is also 15, was showing him a handgun when it went off. The teenager telling police it was an accident. It happened about 1130 this morning in a trailer home park in the 8600 block of South Zarzamora. A sergeant at the scene said they do not know exactly what led up to the shooting. But again, he indicated that they had been playing with a handgun. Police do not know where the teens got it from. It's hard to see. I mean, any anytime a kid, uh, a child is injured like that, it's unfortunate, especially with a firearm when, uh, you know, it may have been preventable had the, the gun been locked up appropriately. It is not clear yet what charges might come out of the investigation, either against the teenager or any adult for allowing access to the gun. Well, yesterday we told you it would happen, and today it happened a day early. Dr. Ruth Berggren, our frequent COVID-19 medical consultant, setting an example for our community, becoming one of the first few in the community to receive the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine. Dr. Berggren has told us over and over as the public watches her and other health professionals get the vaccine, she hopes it will help build the confidence everyone needs to roll up their sleeves and get one. Coming up at six, we're going to hear from Dr. Bergeron about the experience. Well, after some nine months of battling through this deadly pandemic, it seems an end may finally be on the horizon. Yeah, and as you just saw, local health care workers and support staff among the first in Bear County to be immunized against the coronavirus. Devin Clark has been at UT Health San Antonio of nursing all day long where this historic event took place today. He joins us live to give us a recap. Devin? Well, good evening, Isis and Steve. Yeah, it was really hard to find someone here at UT Health San Antonio School of Nursing who wasn't smiling. This was a much anticipated moment. Everyone happy that it was happening. Those smiles that we saw today, expressions of hope and relief. A round of applause as some of the first vaccines to be administered in Bear County entered the room at UT Health San Antonio School of Nursing, where 100 medical professionals and support staff received their first of two doses. Are you nervous? The first in line. 65-year-old Dr. Adelita Cantu, associate professor at UT Health San Antonio School of Nursing, who was excited but remained humble. I'm just playing one role that everyone else is playing nationwide to be a part of the end of the pandemic. And um, 
it's a it's an inspiration to me and I hope it's an inspiration to a lot of other people in the community. Kendra Mack also making history. The nursing student entering into her final semester, becoming the first to administer the shot here at the school. It's like hope in a vial in that little container. So it's just a blessing to be a part of it. For Mack, the desire to help in the pandemic is a deeply personal one. My grandmother has COVID and she's in a nursing home right now. So just being able to take a step and take a step back and really recognize that I'm able to make a difference right now as a student. And that just means the world to me. And it means the world to Dr. Cantu that others realize the importance of rolling up their sleeves and getting the vaccine as soon as they can. It is here. It's safe. It's just secure. Get it. And we understand that Dr. Cantu is planning on getting her second dose on January 5th. And we do want to mention that every day for the next five business days, 1,000 medical professionals and support staff will be vaccinated here at UT Health San Antonio School of Nursing. And we do expect future vaccines to be rolled out for the public in coming months. For now, reporting live outside of UT Health San Antonio, Devin Clark, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Devin. Healthcare workers all over the country are now getting the long anticipated COVID-19 vaccine and not a moment too soon with COVID cases surging across the country and a record 110,000 people currently in the hospital in the U.S. with the virus. ABC's Rena Roy has the latest. Though there is hope on the horizon with vaccinations already underway at hospitals across the U.S., the current COVID-19 numbers are dire. We are still in a terrible situation with the numbers. On Monday, the U.S. topped 300,000 deaths, 17,000 in the last seven days, 101 fatalities an hour. According to the COVID tracking project, hospitals at or nearing capacity with a record number of COVID-19 patients. Right now, we're so overwhelmed. We're working every way we can can managers, supervisors, nurses, it's just we're all on autopilot at this point. ICU capacity and staffing rapidly dwindling in Southern California. We're going through perhaps the most intense and urgent moment since the beginning of this pandemic. Dr. Carlos Araujo Presa in Texas fought the virus from the beginning, heading the ICU before getting sick himself and dying of COVID. My dad loved his job and he loved working on the front line. He loved feeling that he could help people. Nine months into the pandemic, a sigh of relief from healthcare workers taking part in the largest vaccination effort in U.S. history. From Florida and Louisiana to Texas and Colorado. Those on the front lines in New Jersey speaking out after getting the shot. I have two young boys um, that I remember the first wave, I couldn't hug them. So now I, I feel relieved that my children, I can go home and hug them and kiss them and not feel worried that I might be the one bringing them the virus. Now there is more good news on the vaccine front with Moderna expected to get the same emergency use authorization as Pfizer after an FDA hearing on Thursday. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. And as you just heard, the Moderna vaccine is indeed one step closer to emergency use authorization. An advisory panel to the FDA has released a briefing document ahead of their meeting on Thursday. It confirms the Moderna vaccine's efficiency against COVID-19 was 94 and a half percent, which Moderna had previously reported. The proposed dosing regimen is two doses at least one month apart. The document also details the safety pro profile of the vaccine as favorable with no specific concerns. Let's get to some other top stories today. Police say they believe they found the person responsible for beating up a 93 year old man who eventually died. 24 year old Damian Hernandez has been charged with murder. According to police, he punched and kicked the victim identified as Guadalupe Andrew Martinez in the head and face. Martinez died about a month later while at a rehabilitation center. An investigation in the Bear County Medical Examiner's Office determined his death was caused by that attack. Police arrested a woman overnight after she allegedly stabbed another woman. The suspect has been identified as 29-year-old Amy Diana Ramos. This all happened around 3.30 a.m. in the 800 block of Crystal Street that is located on the south side. Investigators say an argument between the two women escalated, leading to the victim being cut 
on her arm and stomach. The woman was taken to the hospital and is expected to be okay. Police say Ramos left the scene, but Bear County deputies later arrested her at her home on Frio Street. She is charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. The Electoral College has spoken and Joe Biden is now officially president elect of the United States. During an address to the nation last night, Biden repeated his calls for unity while delivering his strongest rebuke yet of President Donald Trump and his allies who are still challenging the outcome of the election with hopes of overturning the results. It's a position so extreme we've never seen it before. A position that refused to respect the will of the people refused to respect the rule of law and refused to honor our Constitution. The court sent a clear signal to President Trump that they would be no part of an unprecedented assault on our democracy. Meanwhile, Republican Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, as well as Russian President Vladimir Putin, both congratulating Biden following the decision from the Electoral College. And we are learning more about the president-elect's cabinet. This afternoon, president-elect Biden tapped Pete Buttigieg to be his transportation secretary. If confirmed by the Senate, the former South Bend, Indiana mayor and 2020 Democratic presidential candidate would be the first LGBTQ cabinet secretary. Buttigieg is seen as a rising star in the Democratic Party, and the nod could earn him what many Democrats believe is needed experience should he run for president again. The role of transportation secretary is expected to play a central role in President-elect Biden's push for a bipartisan infrastructure package. So have Americans learned a lesson from Thanksgiving? That may be the case, according to AAA. They say fewer Americans will travel for the December holidays this year. They're expecting about 34 million fewer to travel from December 23rd to January 3rd as compared to 2019. That shows many Americans may be listening to advice from the CDC not to travel during the pandemic. And if we're talking holiday travel, it means Christmas is right around the corner, which is why many drop by a local coffee shop this morning to support a good cause. It's all part of the Bear County Sheriff's Office Magic of Christmas Toy Drive. While picking up a cup of joe over at Black Rifle Coffee on West Bitters Road, visitors also dropped off toys of all kinds, which are set to be delivered to kids in need in our community. It's our annual event. It's for uh, kids that are from one to four years old that, um, that might not have a Christmas this year. So in this way, we, uh, we let them have a Christmas. If you want to donate a toy, it's not too late. They're accepting toys until 6 o'clock this evening, again, at Black Rifle Coffee Company. Outside right now, clear sky. We started the day at a cool 34 degrees and then we made it into the mid 60s by the afternoon right now 64 at the airport you look at our weather watchers and we are anywhere from the 50s to the 60s but most of us in the 60s bandera at 54 62 in neighboring myco and 62 in universal city what i want to point out here is what's changing right now and that's the wind over the next couple of hours you look up in west texas north texas wind gusts in excess of 30 miles per hour guess where that's headed it's coming our way. I'm going to time it out for you, let you know exactly what to expect coming right up. ECs. Thank you, Adam. If you have done any holiday shopping, you've probably come across the term buy now, pay later. Sounds like a pretty good deal, right? But what is the catch? We'll have that story coming up right after the break. This essay salute holiday greeting is brought to you by Blue Ribbon Auto Collision Center. Hi. I'm Adolf, owner of Blue Ribbon Auto Collision in San Antonio. I would like to take a moment to thank all the men and women in the armed forces and all the first responders. Thank you for your service and sacrifice. God bless you, God protect you, wishing you a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. The new at five, buy now, pay later. It's not a new concept. People have been putting things on layaway for a long time. But if you're shopping online, you're increasingly seeing that option to pay by installments. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz with what you should know about the sort of modern day reverse layaway. 
You're shopping online when a killer red handbag catches your eye. So does the spendy price tag. But right there at checkout is an option to buy now, pay later, a concept that's booming in the pandemic economy. There's no question that this is the perfect time for a coming out party for these sorts of services because online shopping's been growing so quickly anyway. Old Navy to Jimmy Choo, retailers are hooking up with companies that offer short-term loans at the point of sale. Names like Afterpay, Klarna, Affirm, and QuadPay. Part of the allure of these services is that a lot of them don't require a credit check to get the loan or they may just do a soft credit check. Matt Schultz with LendingTree says there are upsides. Many of the loans are zero interest, and you know exactly what you owe and when, but. There are definitely some downsides to these, and one of the biggest is that if you are late, you'll end up running into some late fees. Or in some cases, high interest, and most don't help you build credit. One key thing to know is that these payment services are not all the same. With some, you may pay once a month, with others, every two weeks. So it's important to know exactly what you're signing up for. And critics caution, you could be tempted to spend more than you can afford. As for that red handbag, with buy now, pay later, instead of $268, it's a more doable $67 in four payments. Attractive if you make those payments on time. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Make the Very payments. Very interesting, yeah. Good, cool option. Hi, Adam. It is. Hello. Hey, uh, you know, we've got some changes happening basically right now. So let's get to our headlines. It is going to be a gusty <laughs> evening. Remember Sunday night? Yeah, we remember Sunday night. The gusts. Here you go. Spreester, the Spreester family. Secure yeah. the yard inflatables. We don't have any. We've kind of been over that. <laughs> oh, no, your wife that. won this fight, yeah. huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, everybody else, uh, secure the lawn ornaments and the Christmas decorations because it's going to get gusty. And we do have another freeze coming soon as well with these gusty northerly winds. So let's take a look at the wind speeds across the state. Now, keep in mind, these are the steady sustained winds, not the gusts. The gusts are even higher than this, but we're sustained. Panhandle into West Texas at about 20, 25 miles per hour with some gusts in excess of 30. That gusty wind, it's headed our way. It's upstream and it's moving here into South Texas, so it's not so bad out there right now. I mean, our winds are actually fairly light until you get up into the hill country. That's where the cold front is. It's a weak cold front, but it's enough to cause some wind. That cold front already has some winds of about 15 miles per hour sustained in the hill country. Some gusts up near 30 miles per hour, Rock Springs namely, gusting most recently up to 29 miles per hour. Well, these colors on the map indicate the higher wind gusts, and that color is just gonna spread southward over the next couple of hours. So here's our forecast for the wind gusts this evening. It's actually looking more impressive than we previously thought. By 9 p.m., winds gusting up to 30 miles per hour. Nine to midnight, we could see some wind gusts around 40 miles per hour. So yes, yeah, secure the inflatables and the lawn ornaments if you can out there those Christmas decorations that were, that are susceptible to the gusty winds. We're going to feel it tonight. Temperature wise, we're comfortable in the 60s to even 70 degrees in Del Rio. But you look across the state, and you see that colder air behind the cold front that's headed our way and in the panhandle. Not only is it gusty, but it's cold. Lubbock right now at 35, Amarillo 27. I mean, Oklahoma at 27, Amarillo 28, that is. And this cold front's going to move through and basically just put our temperatures back in check. So tomorrow's going to be a little bit cooler than what we had today. On the cold side of this system, check it out. Yes, that is snow. Some pretty decent snowfall across parts of the panhandle, and especially Oklahoma and Kansas. I wish we could tap into some of that moisture, squeeze out some rain around here or kids. I, I, I wish we could squeeze out some snow as well, but we can't even get some rain from this. We have a little bit of drizzle in the forecast in the days ahead, and that's about it. So this evening becoming gusty in just a few hours. OK, anticipate it around and especially after sunset here. 
By 10 p.m., gusts up to 40 miles per hour. Combine that with temperatures falling off down through the 40s, you'll feel that extra chill out there this evening. Tomorrow morning, not quite as gusty at 35 degrees, but a freeze in the hill country. Those of you in the hill country anticipate a light freeze. We get through the afternoon tomorrow, nothing but sunshine and only in the upper 50s for highs. We get back into the low 60s on Thursday, but that's after a morning freeze of 31, even in San Antonio. A little damp and drizzly Friday into Saturday and high temperatures there on out, basically in the 60s. All right, thank you, Adam. All right, so the Roadrunners thought they were going to go bowling, then they weren't sure. Now... What'd you call it last night? I said they're on a bowler coach. Yes, they were. Well, the ride is going back up now. Yeah, we'll okay, come good. back here. UTSA is going to go bowling, and ironically, they're going to do it at SMU, just not against SMU. We got the details when we come back, and the Spurs are in Houston tonight getting ready to wrap up their preseason. Will that man play? Coming up. USA Roadrunners are now playing the Serve Pro First Responders Bowl slated for December the 26th in Dallas. That's after what we told you first last night on the night beat that the SMU Mustangs were forced to pull out of the Tropical Smoothie Cafe Frisco Bowl this Saturday due to COVID-19 protocols ending their season. The First Responder Bowl has had both Conference USA and Big 12 opponents in the past, and one of the teams being mentioned as their projected opponent is Texas Tech. Now, after one door closes, another one opens on an even bigger stage on national TV. Uh, it's big time. Uh, it's great notoriety for university, um, for the program, for, for San Antonio itself uh, to go out there and represent us. Uh, so, you know, we got to cherish that moment to go out there and play football like we know we're, uh, we're capable of. All right, kickoff for the UTSA in the First Responders Bowl in Dallas on the day after Christmas, late for 2.30 p.m., and you can see it live right here on KSAT 12. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. As the Dallas Cowboys prepare for their game against the San Francisco 49ers this week in a game that has been flexed to off Sunday night football because of their record. Cowboys owner Jerry Jones reiterating today that head coach Mike McCarthy is not going anywhere despite a 4-9 record in his first year as a Cowboys head coach. Other coaches not so much and more specifically defensive coordinator Mike Nolan. Up until their 30-7 win over the Cincinnati Bengals on Sunday the Cowboys defense was last in the league against the rush. Points allowed with 393 and points per game at 32.8. 29th in the league in takeaways. Nolan was asked point blank what he thought of the reports that he might be done in Dallas. I don't even think about it. You know, look, at I just take it a day at a time anyway. It's really not a uh, – I'd prefer not to even answer the question just because it's it's not it's not what's on my mind. I mean, it's uh, – you know, we just take it a day at a time and try to win this game's week in San Francisco and whatever happens after the season happens. But that'll – you know, when that time comes, uh, we'll deal with it if there is a change. All right, kickoff in Arlington on Sunday, slated for noon. Here we go. Our San Antonio Spurs wrap up their preseason at Houston starting high and then ending on Thursday against the Rockets. That's after they lost their preseason opener at home over the weekend, 121-108 to to the Oklahoma City Thunder. DeMar DeRozan was asked if he expects to see his friend James Harden in action tonight, even though he held out of the first part of training camp demanding to trade. I'm not sure. You know, um, it's, going, it's an interesting situation going on with that. You know, I think the whole entire league, you know, looking forward to see what happened with that situation. Well, that situation is he is scheduled to play tonight against the Spurs, his first game with the Rockets this season. All right. Thank you, Greg. You we'll be right back. Well, with the rollout of the coronavirus vaccine comes plenty of questions. Coming up tonight on the News at 6, we spoke to one local health expert who separates the fact from the fiction. It's coming up at 6. Thanks for watching the News at 5. World News is up next. We'll see you at 6.